Welcome to today's lecture on significant digits. I'm Drew Collip. In this lecture, we're going to examine the difference between exact numbers and approximate numbers, and explore the idea of significant digits. The numbers we work with in science can be divided into two categories. The first category is exact numbers. These numbers have no associated error with them. What does that mean? Exact numbers can be found by counting and by definition. Let's explore counting. If I'm in the lab and I count, I have three beakers. I have exactly three beakers. If I have two and a third beakers, I don't have three beakers. A beaker needs to be a hole. The same applies to tires on your car. If you have three and a half tires, your car is not going to run very well. Also by definition, I can say that something is exactly 100 centimeters. There are exactly four sides to a square. So exact numbers, they have an infinite number of significant digits. So for a car tire, it has four decimal zero, 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 going on and on and on and on and on and on off to infinity. So I did that to make a point. Exact numbers have an infinite number of significant digits. Infinity symbol. The other type of numbers we work with in science are approximate numbers. And these numbers will always have some error associated with them. These are numbers found by measurement. So unlike above, where we were counting items or we were defining something, this is numbers determined by measurement. And that's what we're doing in the lab. We're measuring something and we get some data in the form of numbers. So for instance, we might be weighing the mass of some sodium chloride on different balances. Let's explore that. Here's two of the balances you'll find in our laboratories. This one here is called a top loading balance. You can see the pan is open to the outside environment. You can also see the readout is to three digits. Then we have the analytical balance. You can see it looks a lot different. There's actually these shields over top to protect it from air being blown back and forth because it reads off to five digits. So to look at these for a moment, a top loading balance, if you measured something, you would get 2.65 grams. Same mass on the analytical balance will give you 2.6524 grams. One is to two decimal places, the other one is to four decimal places. This has three significant digits, this has five significant digits. However, that last decimal place there. For instance, in the top loading balance, the five, there's some uncertainty there. Is it exactly five? Is it four? Is it six? Over here, same applies to that four. That last number there, there's some uncertainty there. It's oftentimes plus or minus one. So is that value 2.6524, 2.6525, 2.6523? There's some uncertainty there. What if I took this and repeated it? If I weighed it again, would I get exactly the same number? Chances are you wouldn't. Now in the laboratory, we're trying to train you to be both accurate and precise. I haven't defined what those two terms mean just yet. So in your head, ideally you're both accurate and precise, but if you only had to pick one, would you rather be accurate or would you rather be precise? Pick one now. My choice is I'd rather be precise. Let me explain why. Let's now talk about precision versus accuracy. So the decimal place of the last significant digit indicates the precision of your measurement. Your precision is the degree of reproducibility of a series of measurements. So a top loading balance goes to two decimal places and analytical balance goes to four decimal places. Therefore, the analytical balance is more precise than the top loading balance. How do you know whether you're precise when working in a lab? Well, precision means you can reproduce those results. If you reproduce an experiment many times and get many different numbers, you are not precise. If you reproduce the experiment many times and you get the same measurement every time, then you are precise. So precision has to do with the skill of the operator. 
Can you reproduce this experiment? The number of significant digits in a number determines the accuracy of a measurement. So accuracy is the degree of how close to the true value your measurement was. And in statistics, we talk about this as your error. So deviation refers to your precision and error refers to your accuracy. So top loading balance has three significant digits, whereas an analytical balance has five significant digits. So you'd be more accurate using an analytical balance. But quite often, equipment needs to be calibrated. If your equipment is not calibrated, it doesn't matter how precise you are, you won't be accurate. That's why I selected precision over accuracy. The precision you have in the lab has to do with your skill set. Your accuracy often has to do with the calibration of the instrumentation, and that can be fixed quite easily. Just recalibrate it. If you don't have the right skills, it's much more of a challenge to fix that. Let's talk about rounding off. When we do a calculation, we often have a large number of digits in the calculator. Please note, you are to leave all those digits in the calculator until the final answer. Only once you get the final answer, only then do you round off to the correct number of significant digits. I need to get a stamp for this because this is written on many people's tests. Do not round off until the final answer. Very important. Quite oftentimes when students are working, they do the first round of calculations and they round it off right at the bat. No, don't do that. Keep all the digits in the calculator, every one you can, until the very final answer. The issue is, is that your calculated results can't be more precise than the least precise measurement you made. So we have to round them off to the least precise measurement. Let's review the rules for rounding we're going to use in this course. Just to clarify, using your elementary school rules, the ones you learned probably when you were in elementary school. Let's round this number off to three significant digits. We look to the one digit to the right. If that number is four or zero, we leave the digit the same when we write it down. So this becomes rounded off approximately equal to 4.12. If, however, we're rounding the three significant digits and the number to the right is five or larger, what we do, we increase that number. We raise it. This becomes 4.13. If we're working with very large numbers, for instance here, let's say we want to round this off to three significant digits. I look to the number to the right, it is a seven, and I write this now as 413, right? 413 is the same as saying 41,273, right? Wrong. Remember, we need those zeros in place as placeholders. These are very important. Let's say your employer says to you, I'm going to pay you $41,273, rounded off to three significant digits, and they pay you $413, and you're going to say, okay. No, remember that. These place values are important to indicate that this value here is in the hundreds column. If you don't write that, 413, if that's all you write, this value is in the ones column. Don't do that. So again, we're using the elementary school rules for rounding in this course. Please be aware, there are other rules of rounding. I spoke about these briefly in a previous lecture. We will not be using any of this in this course. We will not be using, okay? But it's important you understand these rules in case in other classes you use them. So the first one we'll talk about is some chemistry labs. Some chemistry labs, they say there's an additional rule if the first number to be dropped is exactly five. In this instance here, let's round this off to two significant digits. We look to the number directly to the right. It is not exactly five, it is five. So we use the elementary school rules. This rounds up to 3.8. However, in this case here, if we're rounding this off to two digits, if we're using the chemistry rules, this number is exactly five. So in which case here, they say that this rounds to the nearest even number. The nearest even number to 3.750, we have 3.8 or 3.6. Is 3.75 closer to 6 or 8? Well, it's closer to 8. So we're going to round this off to 3.8. Let me just adjust the symbol approximately equal to. 
So in this case here, there's no difference. Let's examine the next one though. Let's round this number off to two significant digits. So that's not exactly five, so this rounds off to 3.7. Now if we round this off to two significant digits, you can see that number is exactly five. So 3.65, is that closer to 3.8 or 3.6? Well, it's closer to 3.6. So some of these chemists say that this rounds off to 3.6. That can be extremely confusing. I don't like this way of rounding, and I disagree with it. Here's their rationale. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So their rationale is that, well, there's four numbers and there's four numbers. So when it's exactly five and if you round up, you're doing that more often. You have four numbers on both sides, five is in the middle. Their rationale is that if it's exactly five, you're rounding up more often than you're rounding down. So you're being a bit biased. So to get around that, they say you round to the nearest even number to try and divide it up evenly. The thing that a lot of these people are forgetting is there's another number there. It's zero. Let's redo that. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So that's why in my mind, their problem with rounding is irrelevant because there are one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five numbers. That's just my own personal opinion. We've had many debates in the department regarding this. In this class, we will be using the elementary school rules, not this rounding to the nearest even number. Also, please note, in other parts of the world, there are also different rounding rules. In some parts of the world, when they round off to three significant digits, they go back several numbers, three numbers back, one, two, three numbers back. In which case here, this 5 rounds up this 4, this 5 now rounds up this 4, this rounds up this 5 here. So this would round off to 3.76 under those rules. However, with the rules we use in this class, 3.754458, we're going to round off to three significant digits. We look to the one number to the right of it. If it's 4 or below, we leave it the same. So this would round off to 3.75. So those are two different types of rules. We will not be using either of those in this class. As you continue through the program in your career, there might be some variation on how people count significant digits and how they round. Please ask your supervisor. In the end, it doesn't matter how we round or how we do significant digits, as long as we're all doing it exactly the same. If one person is doing it one way and another person is doing it another way, there can be problems that come about. So please be aware, in this class, we're using the elementary school rules of rounding. I'd like you now to practice. Here's some numbers. Round them either to three significant digits or two significant digits. Try that now on your own. Here's all the answers for rounding off appropriately. Notice a couple things here. Number one, notice I left that zero in there. Why? Because it's significant. Two digits. If you just write seven, that's not two significant digits. Seven would be one significant digit. So if you're asking for more significant digits and it comes after decimal place, you put those zeros in. Also notice in many of these problems here, we have zeros as placeholders. Don't get rid of those zeros. 28,500.4 rounded off to two significant digits is not 29. It's 29,000. Remember that. That's why we reviewed place values at the beginning of this course. Now let's examine significant digits because sometimes this can be a challenge. The biggest issue here is when we're counting zeros. 
Sometimes zeros are significant, sometimes they are not. So in this case here, let's look at this zero, or this zero, or these zeros, or this one, or these ones. Is this zero significant? Yes, it is. What about this zero? It is not. It is a placeholder. What about these zeros? Are they significant? They are not. It is a placeholder. What about this zero? Yes, it is significant. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there. If it wasn't significant, I could just write 4. 4 and 4.0 represent the same value. But 4.0 represents a more precise value. What about these zeros? Are these significant? They are not. They are just simply placeholders to tell us the 5 is in the thousands column, not in the ones column. So a reminder, exact numbers have an infinite number of significant digits. Remember we talked about tires. Your car has four tires and it has an infinite number of significant digits. Approximate numbers, these are measured numbers, they only contain a certain number of digits. Very important. Let's examine some of these rules. So significant digits, they only apply to measured quantities. If you count or you define them, those are exact values. Approximate numbers are values that you measured. Exact numbers have an infinite number of significant digits. All non-zeros, they're significant. Begin counting significant digits at the first non-zero digit. And you stop counting significant digits at the last digit recorded. So in this case here, there are five significant digits. Let's review zeros in significant digits. Zeros between non-zero digits, they are significant. So those are both significant digits. Yes, because they are between two non-zero numbers, the five and the one. Zeros to the right of the decimal place are also counted. These values here, they're both significant. You don't actually need those values. The eight and the two are in the right place values without the zeros. Therefore, the only reason why they're written in there is because they are significant. Zeros that come after a decimal place, but before the first non-zero digit, they are not counted. So these zeros here, all of these, these are not significant digits. They are only placeholders to tell us the four is in the ten thousandths column. Zeros after a number, but before the decimal, they're ambiguous. What does the term ambiguous mean? The term ambiguous means there can be more than one meaning to it. So when I'm looking at 40, is that zero significant or not? It may have one, it may have two. Is the four only significant or is the zero also significant? There can be some confusion there. Let's make sure there's no confusion. In this case here, in this course, if I write it as 40 grams, I will say that zero is not significant. Not significant. It only has one significant digit. That zero is only a placeholder to tell us the four is in the tens column, not in the ones column. In this course, how we will represent that, if it is significant, is two different ways. We can use a bar notation above the zero. So normally the bar notation represents it's repeating. It can also represent that in this case here, this zero is significant. That's one way how we will define significant digits. More often than not, we will write 4 times 10 to the 1 grams or 4.0 times 10 to the 1 grams. In scientific notation, there's no ambiguity about digits being significant or not. They're either written and they're significant or they're not written and they're not significant. So please remember, if it's written like this, it means one significant digit in this course. If it's written like this, it means two significant digits in this course. Some practice problems, these should be pretty easy. However, a lot of students have a hard time with these. So I'd like you to go through and just tell me, write the number beside it, how many significant digits there are. Let's do the first one together. There are one, two, three significant digits. That's it. Please do B through L on your own. And then I will take them up. Let's take them up now. How many digits here? There's two. How about here? How many is there? We count the first non-zero digit when we're moving from left to right. Well, so that's going to be one, two, three significant digits. How many digits here? It's in scientific notation. There's no ambiguity there. It's two. What about here? How many significant digits here? One, two, three, four. There's five. 
That zero there is not just a placeholder. It comes at the end of the number after a decimal. It doesn't need to be there to be a placeholder. Therefore, we count it as being significant. What about F? One, two, three. In this course, we said that we will represent that as being three significant digits. If we wanted more significant digits, we would put bars above the zeros or write it in scientific notation. What about here? How many significant digits? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven digits. These zeros are between two non-zero numbers, so those zeros are all significant. H is a tricky one. How many digits are here? Well, notice the bar notation is over top of this zero. That indicates that this digit is significant. Nine is significant, and all zeros between significant digits are significant. Therefore, this has three. This zero is a placeholder. It is not significant. What about this one here? Two non-zero numbers, so one, two, three, four, five significant digits. What about here? Moving from left to right, we start counting when we get to the first non-zero number. One, two, three. Here, scientific notation, no ambiguity, there's one. What about 50,000 kilometers here? How many significant digits? We said in this course, there will be one. These zeros are placeholders to tell us the five is in the 10,000s column. If I wanted something else, I could write bar notations or I could write it in scientific notation. But in this class, it has one significant digit. Significant digits will be very important moving forward in both math class and in your laboratory classes. It is extremely important you fully understand and master this knowledge. If you do not master this and understand it completely and put it into practice in your laboratories, you will lose so many marks, half marks here and there for not having the correct number of significant digits. This skill is extremely important. You fully master. Be aware of that. That's all for today. Until next time.